Hey everyone and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're just going to be looking at Bitcoin and doing an update on the logarithmic regression curve that was fit to non-bubble data. I still have not re-optimized it. Um, so basically the red data points that you can see um, were what this uh, curve was fit to. So excluding you know, quote unquote non-bubble data. So none of the data over here has been um, uh, fit are used to fit this curve. And this curve is just of the form uh, 10 raised to the power a times uh, the log of x minus b. So um, if, you, if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel and also check out the Telegram channel here, uh, which you can also find in the description below if you guys would like to talk about the charts or talk about a lot of other stuff. Um, hopefully we'll get to 2,300 members soon. We're at like 2,250, so it's still growing. Um, so if you want to be part of that growing community, then check it out. Um, but one of the interesting things is, you know, when when the price of Bitcoin was falling, I got a lot of I got a lot of questions about where it was on the log curve, um, and you know I haven't changed anything. I you know fortunately it actually came you know straight down to the bottom of it, and then it's actually rebounded somewhat right back up to the center line. And we've talked before about how in the last uh, market cycle, we saw the price, you know, above that center line and below that, that primary regression curve. And, and it was below it during these um, uh, accumulation phase. And, and during this accumulation phase, we were, we were mainly above it or straight on it, but we really didn't go below it that much. Um, now we're below it, even if we're at, you know, similar prices. Uh, as when we were above it because we were you know we're forward another year in time and and as we move forward in time then the primary logarithmic regression band will continue creeping upwards now obviously it will be important to you know refit this at some point so that we can take into account uh, later data um, I haven't decided when I'm going to refit it or um, you know maybe I'll just wait till another market cycle um, but we'll refit it at some point because you have to remember that this will decay. If we had just fit this data over here, then as we've mentioned, the log curve would look something like that. And if we had fit it to just this data, then it would do something like this. And if it had been to just, you know, this data, this data, and then this data over here, then it would, you know, it would continue going higher. So we want to keep refitting it. It doesn't mean that the model's not valid. It just means we're, you know, the, the exponential growth of Bitcoin is decaying um, and you know we just want to get as accurate of a picture as possible but you know for now we have not updated it we're you know we're looking at the fact that we are currently oscillating uh, between the bottom of the band and the center line and historically buying in this region um, has been has been a, a good choice if you just have a two or three year time frame in the past it was actually you know just a six month time frame or one or two years. We prescribe here to the lengthening cycle theory, unless at least I do. I know many of you don't, but I do appreciate the fact that you listen to me anyways. Um, so again, with the lengthening cycle theory, then you know we're, we're, I'm more or less expecting to stay in this band uh, for the most, uh, you know, for at least for the most part of, of 2020. Um, and you know, obviously I think a lot of people were caught off guard by this. Um, I was too, but it's also a reason we have the risk metric to identify these bubble phases and as well, you don't even, I mean, in terms of trying to identify a speculative bubble, you can just use this. And you don't have to wait for an updated video, I mean, just go to intothecryptocharts.com and I have a live version of this on the website. Um, so I think three of those charts are updated live, but one of them is not, the market cycle ROI one is not updated live. Um, but the other ones are updated live, so you can just go there and check it out. And if you have trouble getting to it, I need to I need to fix it, but um, you should be able to access it if you just type in um, HTTPS colon slash slash www.intothecryptocharts.com. Um, uh, so just check that out if you want to see a live updated version of it so you can follow along even when I'm not making videos on it. Um, but I will obviously make videos to, to continue showing where we are. So you can see we have popped up basically bouncing off the 20 week or the sorry the 200 week moving average which was um, essentially where the bottom of the band lined up uh, coming back up to the center line which is around the 100 week moving average so 
um, that's basically basically where it is, and we'll continue to follow this to to you know identify um, potentially good you know even better times to get into the market if it drops, or identifying a you know the emergence of some uh, speculative bubble uh, mania or something if that were to occur. You know I don't know what's going to happen in the short term. I I tend to think that. Um, it's going to go up in the long term, and if you look at, say, the annualized percentage growth that this logarithmic regression curve would expect, it's about, uh, I think it's about 60% annually. Um, now, that doesn't include uh, speculative bubbles, obviously. So, you know, Bitcoin has had many of these bubbles, and I, I imagine that it will have them in the future as well. And, you know, if you follow this channel, I think you'll, you'll be ready. You'll be ready when that happens. Um, if we look at the again the, the percent difference between the, the top and the primary regression band, um, you can see this is what it looks like. So you, you, you can basically see decreased um, uh, uh, distance between the, the price and the log line as we as we march forward in time. And this is also showing you how we're continuing to see diminishing returns because each time we go into a speculative bubble, we don't go quite as far off this primary regression curve. Um, and so I would expect something similar. I, I think the next bubble, if we have one, say, in 2022 or 2023, I think it'll go higher than this above it, um, but it'll be lower than this one. So you could imagine um, maybe something in, in, in this region or so. Um, here it is if you extend it out uh, for a couple decades. Um, I, you know, and I've, I've talked about this in, in terms of Bitcoin getting to a million dollars. I don't think it's any anything we're going to see in the short term, uh, though I know a lot of people would like to think that. But what I envision happening is, you know, refitting this log curve as we go forward in time. Uh, if we didn't refit it, then ultimately I would expect the price to fall below the regression line. Because again, we said the exponential growth is decaying. So at some point, I do think we would drop below it, and eventually maybe even this would be the the top of a speculative bubble. And I, I do have another video um, that you can find in my videos that it basically talks about a, a what I would consider to be a realistic path to a one million dollar Bitcoin sometime you know between maybe 20, 2038 and, and twenty forty, um, because I actually do think that that's probably three cycles from now. So I think. I think our current cycle will ultimately get us, and this is obviously the, you know, a bullish scenario in, in terms of Bitcoin continuing to remain on course, J just based on like the math behind behind the price, assuming there's not some black swan event or something that causes, you know, something that's not good in, in, in the in Bitcoin land, then I think the math would suggest that we would get to $100,000 um, let me try to find a good spot for this. So we, I think we would get to $100,000 sometime out in maybe 2023 or so, um, and then we would we would we would come back down. Uh, probably I, I would say maybe getting up to three to four hundred thousand um, dollars. Again, if we stay on course with lengthening cycles and diminishing returns, uh, to three or four hundred thousand dollars, maybe by 2030. 2031, something like that, um, and then getting to a million dollars, you know, almost a decade later. Uh, so that's kind of what I think. I know many of you don't want to hear that, um, and uh, well, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, so that's at least my outline for the price, assuming obviously a bullish scenario and that we continue our our trend um, just based on math alone, not including any other fundamental factors. And yes. This obviously discounts the four-year cycle. I don't. I don't really believe in it, um, and it also assumes that at some point, which many of you have probably already realized, that we will have more than one having per cycle in the future. I do think that is the case. Many of you will disagree. Um, let's keep going. Uh, so I think there was yeah. So I just wanted to show again the the log log curve just so you get an idea. So this is having log on not only the y-axis, but also the time axis. Um, so you can see, you can kind of see a little bit more clearly when we're in these um, in these bands. 
but yeah, you can see at the very end dropping down to the very bottom of it, and now we've recently popped back up some. Um, so again, historically, uh, obviously, you know, this has historically been a great time to buy Bitcoin. Obviously, you know, buying at the 200 week moving average is typically the best. Turns out this cycle there was a wick down to the 300 week moving average. I, you know, I will say it now, I usually have buy orders set up at those. Um, in fact, I had a buy order set up at 5,500 a few weeks ago, and also one at the, the 300 week, and yeah, I was a little disappointed to see the price go down below the 200 week in the short term, but then you can see we've actually since recovered. Um, so, you know, typically I think the 200 week does, does work out fairly well, um, but if we do drop below it, a 300 week I think is where you want to be looking. And as we, if we do continue going up in price, then as we mentioned in a video a few a few days ago, um, the 100 week is is likely going to be an area to focus on, and, and that is around $7,100. Um, the 20 week, which is what we need to get above, before I would, for myself, consider diversifying some of the Bitcoin into into altcoins. I think, the, I think the price of Bitcoin needs to get above the 20 week, which is currently at around $7,900. Um, so we have a lot of milestones. You know, don't expect necessarily to tackle them in the next week. And this could be something that, you know, we're kicking the can down the road for, for several months. Um, but again, if your goal is, is to accumulate Bitcoin uh, for the next cycle, then this does present a, a, a somewhat unique opportunity to, to do so. At reasonable prices, I mean, buying at 6,500 is certainly better than buying it at 10.5, which is what you would have been buying at a few weeks ago. Um, so if you're if you're looking at the macro scale and you can live with the downside in the short term, even a drop, you know, even a, a 50% drop or something, if you can deal with that, then um, you know, I, I don't think I, I don't think that investors, you know, people that were buying in in you know, this region and then bought here and then bought here are kicking themselves because they didn't buy everything down here. Um, so just accept that you will not get the bottom right, you will not get the top right. Um, there's always going to be, uh, you know, a, a price that's higher or lower, but if you're just, you know, getting into the market, um, at, you know, even, even during these times where there's a lot of fear, you know, in, in three years or so, you can look back and when people say, well, why were you buying Bitcoin then? We were, we were basically on the edge of a, of a, you know, an economic recession globally because of the coronavirus. You're going to probably look like a genius to some people um, if, in fact, we do continue these, these cycles. Um, and, and by that point, <laughs> when, when the dumb money starts knocking on your door asking how they can buy Bitcoin, you are going to be selling to them, basically. Um, now that's that's your cue to, to start getting out if 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 people start really asking you, you know, where they can buy Bitcoin. So and, and again we've talked about how you would get out. You would do it hopefully dynamically. Not that this is financial advice, this is just how I do it. Um, but I do it uh, dynamically, so at a lower risk level I, I would sell less, but as the risk rises, I would sell more. Um, so again, if you guys like the content, want to follow along subscribe to the YouTube channel, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find the link to in the description below. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.